Pete, thank you for coming on the uh, Manifesto hey, thank Radio you. Podcast. Look at this. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Some weird fucking. Yeah, there you go. Ah, that's uh, that was a weird one. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for that one. Um, we, where are we? Where the fuck are we? Okay, so we're in Tijuana, Mexico. All where? right, it's a place that I've come to for many years because I'm from Chicago and I was in a very bad car accident. It was even on the news and everything, and I had six back surgeries. Okay. So every winter, I would be on the floor in Chicago. I have to have my students like give me massages, walk on my back. I'd be in so much pain. And I went and stayed in San Diego. I stayed with my friend Jeff Glover. And he was at the time dating a girl. Um, she's actually just won the ultimate fighter, Juliana Miller. So he was dating her and I was staying in her apartment so it was kind of uncomfortable. So I kind of felt like it was time to leave. So in the middle of the night I got up, I, was, I had a walker, a back, back brace. I was at Jeff's house and I called an Uber and I just went straight to Tijuana, Mexico. It was about, we were living in National City. Where did you get the idea for Tijuana? Like why well, there? It's pretty expensive in California, it is so pretty I'm paying expensive. rent in Chicago, all right, and trying to pay rent in San Diego. There's no way. There's no way. There's no so way. But the way you can do it was, I was staying at Jeff's house, but he's living with his girl. That, that gets uncomfortable after a few days. So I just walked over, and I've lived in Brazil for many years, Rio de Janeiro. You, you, you were one of the first Americans to go down and yeah, train in Brazil. Like, like to really train. A lot like, of Americans went there, a lot of foreigners went there, but I'm in the book, like Gracie book, the Gracie way. I trained a lot. That, that, you, you went down, like what year did you go Around down 2000, to Brazil? 2000, 2000. And I went with the man himself, Carlson Gracie. So Carlson at the time was the biggest thing. And he just took me around day one, like to every local places Jim was there like 40 years and I said this is Pete he's like my son just did that introduction and um, but Carlson passed away so I was, I was missing that in my life because um, what you need is a Don when you become very good at jiu-jitsu yeah a Don is a master's master and and so, and Don. Don. so like yeah exactly Carlson was a, the Don of jiu-jitsu and um, passed away, so I, my heart was hurting as far as, not physically, but just like, I can't join another team. So I was missing that in my life, I'm done. So I was at Glover's, and Glover's kind of like a little bit younger than me, so we teach each other a lot, but I can't really call Glover my coach or my master, and so it's rough. I'm from Carlson Grace Jiu Jitsu, you know, this shirt right here is 25 years old. And um, I can't just join another team. So Jeff, one of my best friends ever, you know, he does wrist locks now too. We all have videos on BJJ Fanatics. And I just, I didn't even tell them. Middle of the night, it was like 2 a.m., they're sleeping. I cross the border, boom, start walking. And I am lost. I'm walking in TJ at my walker and like thinking like, am I gonna get robbed? Fuck. I'm just walking. I mean, I lived in Brazil. I don't care. I could do it. And I'm walking. Yeah. And an old man sees me. He's around 90 years old. And he's like, "Where do you live?" I'm like, "I don't even know where I'm going." He's like, "I own a bunch of hotels here. I'm staying in my hotel." And I explained to them, you know, my mom was a little bit older. I can't just be paying rent in all these places. Yeah. They're like, look, we'll hook you up. You pay for the month, and if you stay for 10 days. We'll freaking give you 20 when you come back. Whatever you want, Pete. Like, don't worry. What, what hotel is this? Oh, there's, um, there's a few. So it's, it's one, the it's one of the, it's one of the, it's a, it's, it's in a, is, is it in the El man Central? Was, the man's the president of all the hotels. Is in it Tijuana. in El Central? Yeah, in Central. So yeah, he's the yeah. president, um, cool. buddy, he just passed away. And he's the president of all these hotels here. So they liked me from the start. And then he sent me to a place called Aguas Termales, <laughs> yeah. which is, it's a place Therm not too many people know about yeah, over here. Yeah, it's hot water, basically, uh, thermal water. It's from, the, it's from a volcanic, um, it's if a you thing. when they're digging for um, for gas or something, they'll find that. It's like yeah, an Aztec really. place. Yeah. And they go there for healing and... So, for people that don't know a lot about your background, where where did you first get started in this whole fighting thing? You, well, uh, it's my dad. My dad oh, so we had hot dog place. If you know anything about Chicago, we're known for hot dogs, gyros. My dad's the first guy in Chicago to have a gyro sandwich. Okay. So, like, he learned about it and uh, from New York. Put it, make the scores, stick it in there, put it on the first ones, the euros. 
Vienna Red Hots, hot dogs. Our place is called Kings and Queens, and we used to open up a bunch of them. That's your, that's your, so your family was in the hot dog business, basically. Hot dog business, and my mom's family in the pizza business. So my, my, my grandma was the first woman in, uh, in Chicago to have business. So her name's Leona, Leona's Pizza. She passed away now, but I'm Sicilian and Greek. So we're like, we're hot dogs, euros, and and I hated that, you know? Like, so that, that, you I'm in the want, restaurant. You didn't want to go into that family and business? bags of money as a kid, you know? Like, just it, thinking life's not easy. For you. And not I, for you. It was, a, it was a karate place next door. My dad was a black belt. Like, real karate, like Okinawa and stuff. And um, I'd go over there. I just get bored out of my mind. I was like, whoa, this is kind of like, when are we really going to fight? And so I would just show up to the belt promotions, and you better believe it, the coach would be pissed. He's like, just because your dad is a hot dog plays, and you can't just show up in a belt. I'm like, I'm here ready to fight. Like, I'll fight any one of these fools. And so they'd be getting their belt promotion, and I wouldn't even do the class. I would show up to a promotion. Just to fight people. Yeah, because my dad would train me. Um, he'd go on his knees. Like, the way we train, like Spartan training like in Greece, like, my dad would get on his knees I just and fight me from there and wrestle me just all types of games. Like when he's driving a car, I just throw chops at like my neck or throat and I have to like just yeah. always keep in reaction. So you, so you go from that influence in karate, going there and basically not training but sorry. I play ice like hockey. My cousins are the best ice hockey players in, in the world. The Chris Chelios, he's um. So that's, that's where you got all the impact? Just, just oldest hockey, fighting. he's the oldest player in NHL. He's on Olympics, everything. Chris Chell, he's a freaking legend. And um, his grandma, my grandpa, brother and sister, we come from like pretty tough. He's the guy that was in the NHL, like always fighting. You see him like, he was on the Montreal Canadiens and the Blackhawks and the Detroit Red Wings. And so bam, I didn't wrestle in high school because of that, because I was big into ice hockey. And um, shoot, I would fight the wrestlers. The high school I ended up graduating from has the best wrestling program in the world, pretty much. It's Izzy style wrestling. It's Montini High School. Yeah. And it's John Jones wrestling coach. So, it's, so like, boom, we're in there. So I'm like 14, 15 years old. My mom was a little ill. She had a heart attack. So I find Carlson Gracie Jiu Jitsu. She gives me the car. I drive. I drive like an hour every day to go to gym. Where, where, where was this? Uh, where was the gym? Downtown Chicago. Downtown Chicago. I live right next to Al Capone Cemetery. It's Wait, Mount where, Carmel. And where, right how, how did you learn about Carlson? Like, oh, so I told the wrestlers since I couldn't wrestle. I'm like, look, if you guys ever find jujitsu, let me know. I'm in a lunch. I was like, yeah, we find Carlton Gracie. I'm like, what? Carlton. I'm like, okay. I go over there. I meet the guy who's American, I'm like, you're not a Gracie. What the, like, what's going on here? And then I meet and Junior comes in, Carlson's son. I'm like, oh shoot, I'm like, that's the guy. Yeah. And um, he became my best friend. I became, once I got my license, well I don't even remember if I had my license, whatever. <laughs> I'm Greek, we start drinking, I, we start drinking five years old. Just I, to, I, the dad gives it to you, like, hey, I shut up, it. take a beer, relax. I get it. Not the whole thing, we take a couple of sips and I start driving. To jiu jitsu because I was already driving to the store. My mom had a heart attack, so I looked old. When I was like 14, 15, I already looked old, and all the people like me. And I got pulled over, like my friends with the police. It's it not a big deal. Chicago, they call it Chi Town, it's yeah. a little town. So um, we're over there, bam. So now I'm in jiu jitsu world. I just I catch the fever. My whole life becomes jiu jitsu. I had a scholarship to baseball for that Montini. I was like, is it last season? like? Um, last sport of the season, I'm like, I'm not playing, I'm in jiu-jitsu, that's it. I got arm barred a couple of times, American, I couldn't even throw the ball anymore. And bam, I'm over there training every single day. Every single day with Carlson Ray Jr. I was his driver. And um, I pick him up every day. He lived in Humble Park, which is um, where I opened my first trip. Pick him up, we drive downtown, and they would just go down every day. Because sometimes it gets bored to go to your yeah. own gym. It's way better when you're a student, like, come on, let's go, let's go, and then you go, and, and then he would teach me stuff on the side, because I was a driver, like, if someone drive me around, they gotta be tough, like, <laughs> especially you're driving around Carlson or his son, like, because people are gonna want to beat you up, like, you drive, show up, like, all right, dude. Did, did, he, did, did the people show up to challenge him a lot? I was little, I was like 15, my mom would come with me, I was the only kid in the class whose mom would come, she's like, fuck that shit, these guys, um, they're older men, 26, 27 years old. They could beat me up, so my mom would come to all the practices. But um, like uh, historically, there was a lot of things about people challenging the Gracies and stuff like that. Well, did you get to see any of that uh, training there? 
people showing up. Yeah, like, like Vitor Belfort was coming in training with us when I was like 15. He would come box at Garfield Park in, in Chicago. Chicago has some good boxing gyms. So he'd come over there and so I was training with Vitor when I was like 16 as a kid. I met him, like, I never really wanted to be a jiu-jitsu champion. I met these guys. My coach was the best mixed martial arts champion. Uh, Carlson Gracie was the best. He had Vitor, 19 years old. I just wanted to be like that. All I was thinking about was pride fighting championships. Pride fight. That's all I was thinking about was pride or UFC. And um, my coach's team split apart because of money. A lot of things, you know, whatever. They're in Brazil. They, they went their separate ways. The team split apart. I go to Brazil. I didn't want to join those guys. What year was this when you went Around to Brazil? 2000. This is when. This is when that everything boom. That Brazilian everything top exploding. team. Exp yeah. It was what happened is pride, all that, and my coach. He focused all of his attention on Vitor. So the rest of his team was left alone for a while. And then when he came back, like, oh, I'll go back to Vitor. But then it was, it was a mess. No one wanted to share. It happened. So um, I show up to Brazil. I had nowhere to really train. And so a coach tells me, just go anywhere you want, but there. So I went to train at all the places. So I mean, I wouldn't say they loved me, but they liked me a lot because they knew I was doing the right thing. I was showing up. My coach, like, my coach is the best. No one can say anything to him. So. I represented him all the way through, and, and that's what even this rooster is. And <laughs> when I came to Mexico, it reminded me of Brazil. So yeah. I crossed the border, whatever stories you hear, it's just like Rio de Janeiro. This, this, there's it's something a mini to it. Rio de Janeiro, but instead of Jiu Jitsu, you have boxing here. Yeah, bo yes, bo uh, Tijuana. If you don't know how to box. Yeah, this, is, this place, this gym right here, is where Julio Cesar Chavez learned to box. He came here as a kid with his brothers and um, coach taught him. And like with anything, you teach the people the basics and they go their own ways, so, you know. So what happens during your career where you So jiu-jitsu is so banned. I get in a couple accidents. First one, I'm training in Hawaii, BJ Penn. I hurt my neck swimming in the ocean. It takes me a little while to get that better, but I finally do. And then, um, shoot, I even went to Peru and lived with Tony D'Souza in the mountains of Cusco. I could play the didgeridoo and everything. I was at my friend's house yesterday. He had a didgeridoo there. They just got it. Joel Tudor. And he's the best surfer in the world, by the way. Majid. I was over there. I had this didgeridoo. They didn't even know what it was, really. Like, oh, you got a didgeridoo? I picked it up and I started jamming on it. They're like, can you teach us? I'm like... Spent a lot of time with Tony. It's called Cholizo, like a cholo, but Cholizo. And he helped me learn how to breathe and learn how to eat and how to um, to fix myself. And man, he fixed my back. He was a master healer. And I got back to Chicago. I felt great. I opened a gym, had like 200 students. And I get hit by like drunk drivers. Fuck. Boom! Bah! Insurance went up very expensive. It was like 200 a month. It was up 1,200. Doctors are like, look, those things are mangled now, dude. There's nothing you can do. It's and, fine. Yeah. And so I had like four or five, maybe six surgeries all together right there. And um, I didn't want to do them all at once. But I had to do them because I can still afford insurance. And what happens in the future, like now it's like expensive. I managed to show. Took care of that. Um, still hurting, it still hurts to this day. A lot of it's mental, knowing how to breathe. Show up to TJ, and then coach of uh, the hotel, his friends with, actually the hotel, one of the hotels they're living at was where they would weigh in all the fighters. So a lot of these pictures on the wall are at the, are at the hotel. At that hotel. And so they put me um, to, to come over here and meet Mr. Cheto. And he's, uh, he reminds me of Carlson. He's like Carlson Gracie to me of boxing. And they have patience with me. Like normally they throw people in the ring. Right now it's raining. It's raining very hard here. So. Yeah, normally that, they throw that. people to the ring and feed them to the wolves. There's a hurricane going on right now. First time in 23 years that it hits Whoa, uh, Tijuana. That's what's going on. That's what's normally going. they throw people in the, in the ring and I showed up here and coach was real nice to me. Most of my training here is done just talking. And they show me pictures and, and give me the history. And I started thinking about Carlson here. And, Shoot, but I always go back to Chicago, you know, in my school there, thank God for those guys. Chicago people are, are like, shoot, man, the tough people, and they run the gym for me, and I go back and I show them stuff. And coach has showed, showed me, like, old school boxing. Yeah, yeah. Like, old school, like, how to, 
how to how to hurt someone, not point fighting. There's not too many coaches left like that. No, like, there's a no. couple in like Mexico City, like Nacho Berenstein, you have him. And of course there's always new gyms, the youngest, toughest fighters that don't want to listen, they just want to brawl. And they have those here too, but this place it feels like um, this, is, this is as old school as you can get. That's as old as Jim in Tijuana, so all the, everyone knows everyone. Chetos, uh, this is Chetos Boxing Club. If you if you kind of want to figure out where this place is, it's uh, right where the uh, Plaza de los Mariachis is, right on where the, the arches in Tijuana. Yeah, right so next where to the arches arch. are, where the big arches across the border, like yeah. five minutes walking. Yeah, this is uh, this has been here for. Decades. Yeah, you have Chavez, like over 40, like from 40 years, Chavez, all these terrible, guys. Terrible, El Terrible, here, El Manteca is a train here. You name it, they train here. It's a, it's a so, pretty cool old school gym. So coach takes on fighters, and then they let me assist in the training. So I don't have to, I do on my own pace, I don't have to hit anyone, and, and they allow that. And that's really cool, because now um, I think my boxing is pretty good. I owe it all to these guys. And physically. Yeah, physically, everything. And and right now, the reason why I like Tijuana is because most of my friends in Jitsu live in San Diego. Example, I have Andre Galvano there. Jeff Glover used to live there. Right now, I'm assisting in a training for the ADCC, which is the biggest tournament in Jitsu in the world. That's next weekend. It's the Abu Dhabi Combat Championship. And I'm assisting, spending all my time with the boys, there, um, the Rotolo brothers. They're really cool. We're both um, sponsored by Ruka, and um, Ruka sponsors Carlson Gracie. Pat Tenori gave me his brand new jacket right off his back. It wasn't even out yet. So here, Pete DeGree, man, cool people. And, and Shoya Rolls, real close by. And so all my strongest supporters are just right across yes, the right board. Across the board and um, set up like fighter houses where I live. So so wherever I'm at, there's always like three or four guys. I'm not some rich guy, you know, spending money. Three or four guys living like Spartan soldiers on the floor. We all respect our area. And um, I'm on the road to recovery. Like I definitely cannot fix my spine. I have artificial discs. I have all types of things in there. But what I can do is make everything else stronger. And, what I've been doing lately is called foundation training. That's with Coach Jesse Salas. And um, that's what we're doing with, with the Rotolo brothers. And AJ's with us too. And we're doing all this stuff. It's posture. It's basically working your, your So it's basically working um, traction, traction my spine long ways and wide. Like in the old bodybuilders, you'd see how wide they would get. And people yeah. forget about that. So if you go to a chiropractor, they'll, they'll traction you out, but then it's just gonna go right back into place. So when you're breathing correctly, and we do this for, we have a good like 10 exercises. We keep our hips in and do them. Coach Jesse's he's working, he worked with Madonna. And um, Ruka sent them to us for this ADCC. So right now I'm spending most of my time in San Diego. I came over. Um, my mother passed away here. So believe it or not, Sorry about um, that. yeah, we were in Chicago. It was January. My mom was put on hospice seven years ago, and we were able to beat that. Like man, I did. That's so good. And then once she got good, I was able to start coming over to San Diego in the winters, and she was great. But the winters get hard in Chicago. Snowstorm was coming, we came yeah. over here. She fell and broke her hip. And she fell again and broke her hip. And then it just made things complicated because um, they didn't notice it. She also broke her back. So when she went to the rehab place, they fixed up her hip and said, you gotta go. And they didn't check her back. So when she went back to the, it was, hey, God bless everyone working in that industry. It's not easy, you know? Yeah. So my mom, she passed away here. So I have to get, um, that certificate was in Spanish, I have to get in English, and everyone here was really nice, like, why did I bring my mom here, because in Chicago it's hard, my brother passed away, my dad lives in Greece, so it's just me and her, and, and getting help sometimes, I'll go teach seminars, it costs like $500 a day, Yeah. so I leave for like three days, I already pay $1,500, she'll get pissed, so, we'll come to TJ, I didn't have to really leave too much, I would leave for the day, because I could teach in California, boom, 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 come back, and um, we had a suite 
so my mom, um, she says, she goes over there, well, she's on the suite in the balcony, and she goes, I'm tired, Pete, I'm tired, and she looked at me and she started meditating, passed away. It was a beautiful, it was like a transition. She just um, goes, close her eyes and left. Say, I'm tired. And, so, and then she looked at me, like, bless me a second, and went back. It was right in the balcony. It's uh, a big high rise over here. You can actually see this place from up there. You can see everything. And um, so then she passed away. And here's, here's this easier if you're older. Um, if, like, the people are nice to me. Like, United States people ask me, how's your mom doing in Mexico over here? And TJ asked me, when's your mom coming back? You understand? It's a difference. And I have friends here that help me too. Shoot, like, so, so yeah, I like it here. The food's good here. Remind me of Brazil. Remind me of my coach Carlson. Like, even over here, I'm allowed to go to um, my friends raise roosters over here. Not too far. Yeah. Special place. And Al Capone, he's from Chicago. He's buried right next to um, where my grandma's in the mausoleum. He's right there. It's called uh, Mount Carmel Cemetery. And uh, he lived over here too. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's a, the, fe the, the federal high school here. Yeah, he owned that, it. So right next that was, to that, that was he, Al yeah. So next door, and he also owned the Thermal Waters for a little bit. And in Chicago, he owned uh, the Russian Sweat Lodge that I go to. So it's really cool. And dude, I'm in no mafia anything. I, that's like people ask me the mafia. I would say like Google. <laughs> or something like that. And shout out to Mark Zucker, Zuckerberg. You know, if, if anyone's in anything, that's a dude. And that's he loves jujitsu and he follows BJJ fanatics. Zuck. Yeah, there was a dude. video. There was a recently a video of him sparring. Dude, great. He's seen jujitsu technique. He's training with the Camarillo brothers. Or the students I mean, at Half. Half is um, my coach Carlson Hobson's uh, brother. Is only brothers from the same mom, so they're really close. Hanzo's. From them too. Henzo got in a fight yesterday in a, on the subway in New York. And uh, Henzo will throw down like, this is like real right yeah. here. And and I'm not a tough guy. I don't try to get in fights here. Um, this is a calm place. You, you, calm, you calm down, you come down, uh, TJ. Getting better. Build, building yourself back up. Oh, I, I started with the walker. You started here with the walker. And I was walking one day with the walker and I was on my iPhone. I'm like, am I yeah. gonna get attacked? I'm gonna get attacked right away, like five dudes. I'm like, fuck, dude. I'm like, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna eat it. I'm like, yeah. I'm on a walker, guys. Like, we don't care. They looked at me, yeah. they're just gonna hurt me from my iPhone. I look across the street, and one of the homies from the boxing gym, like, nah, hey, what's up, Pete? It's Johnny. He's really good. He's a champion from over here. Yeah, he's a campeon. And then the guys right away, like, hey, you wanna go get a beer? I'm like, oh, yeah, TJ's nice, it's just dude. like Chicago. As soon as you know your name, well, he can't rob you anymore. You That's just it. See, like, <laughs> and that was it. And it just seemed like, I'm like, I didn't go out to drink. I said, man, this is a small town. You, you, you get better. You, uh, you, like, we started interacting online, started seeing your stuff all over the place. Jocko, I, Jocko's 50th birthday yesterday. I went over there. I missed him by a minute, but I saw Dean Lister and taught a wrist lock class. Um, I saw Galvao the other day, he's getting ready for ADCC. The twins are his students. Awesome. awesome. Um, with the twins all day long. I don't post much about them because when I'm in a fight camp, I don't like to post anything. No, I, got, I, I got bit by two stingrays a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah, they helped me out the water. Stingray season. I got bit like last yeah. year too in and, and, and Playa del Carmen. I'm your definition of where the best jiu-jitsu is, I'll be there. You mean I may not have all the medals because all these surgeries I my never got hurt in jiu-jitsu. And boxing, it's really good. Shadow boxing, having a cute girlfriend, these type of things will help you. Will help you with always support, you know, because jiu-jitsu is a lot of grabbing, right? So just by me doing this type of stuff. My jiu-jitsu has skyrocketed because jiu-jitsu is holding, it's hurting my neck. And so bottom line is Anthony Bourdain loved this place. If you asked him, Anthony, where's the best place in San Diego to eat? He's going to send you right here and he's going to send you right down the street on 6th Street. They got um, one of his favorite bars over there. And man, dude, if you like Anthony Bourdain, if you like tacos, if you like Ed over here, <laughs> man, come visit TJ. Yeah, yeah. Don't be scared. If you no. come here scared, 
It's a place, South America, you cannot come. You have to just say, you know what, I'm uh, going. It's, uh, I, went to, I went to Chicago a few times and I got to uh, go to Southside yeah. with some of the gang unit members. Sure. And uh, I'm from Tijuana. Yeah. And but, I was nervous. Oh, of course. I was um, nervous. But then I get some of those guys over here when they retire. Now they're nervous, nervous too. But like, but I tell them like, so like, Tijuana is, it, don't do, don't do anything stupid. Don't walk around alone in places where you shouldn't be walking around alone. Don't like, pee like, on the street. Don't like, pee on the street. Look, here's the attitude when people come visit. Don't me. piss on the street. Don't, uh, yeah. just don't do any shit you wouldn't do at home probably. And a few things that you can do at home, like party till five in the morning. Uh, I don't know. Like, what, People what? come with the attitude like, oh, this is Mexico. I could do whatever I want. It's not the attitude you want. It's more like have the same respect of your dojo anywhere, anywhere you're at. It's consequences. Anywhere. It's just, um, you don't know who loves who. You can see some weak guys, whatever. You don't know who loves him. Someone can love that guy. What if you just hit him or anything? Uh, top three places to eat here if you want them for you. Oh, no, oh, okay, so I kind of cheat. One of my favorite places is um, either Pampas or Shuhashkaria. It's a Churashkaria. Brazilian steakhouse. It's, it's, a, it's a Brazilian steakhouse, but oh, it's pretty no fucking man, fascinating. It's, it's, not, it's not authentic Mexican, it's not Tijuana, but it's a fuck, it's fire, it's a it's fire, fire place. It's like 15 bucks. So 15 like, bucks, it's like a sword. It's like being in Brazil. It's, yeah, it is. And, the and Mex also, Mexican the, people love it. The, there's a difference, I think, of course, of American beef and the beef you get here at the churrascaria. You always got to be smart at those places. Like maybe they see, like try bring you some old stuff. Say, no, 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 I'll wait. Bring me the picanha. Yeah, picanha, yeah. Wait oh, that. that's, and then, um, okay, like so tacos. That's what, that's what. I know some street taco places. I know where they're at. I don't even think they have names, but no, I got the one. Good ones, oh, Cabeza, the good ones. I got the one, I got the one with the cheese and the shrimp right over here. Um, enchilados, I think they call them. Um, and then I got, I got the carne asada, but, and then I got the birria, but there's... Camarón enchilado. Think, like, I think taco naso is pretty good, tacos al franc is good, you got... Basically, it's a, it's a bunch of places, it's a hard question. So many, like, well in Central right over here, you have, and I'm telling you, and then you got the burrito, you got burrito of Cholo, he's over there in front of the, the Copeo, so... You'll find these places in front of like the busiest nightclubs at like three in the morning. That the, that's the spot. Or or in the morning, like early morning. Yeah. And then so um, you usually see the crowds around them around three in the morning when the bars are letting up here in Tijuana. Yeah, and you can get acai here. You get all the Brazilian stuff, and they got good jujitsu training here. You got entram training here. Yeah, they they, uh, you know I mean? they have the entram gym here in Tijuana. It's right over here on the they, right on that's who the, five minute walk. They produced uh, the, the Brandon Moreno. They have a, Brandon Moreno. Like, the guys from. Atos, the twins, the Rotolos, they come over here, um, train. Uh, yeah, they're legit. But this right here is, uh, they don't even care about MMA. They, they're gonna bring Lucha Libre back. They're the King Azteca. Yeah. And his sons, uh, like, it's big around here. You know, you got um, Rey Mysterios from around here. And and, and they'll prepare his people to fight in WWE and all that stuff. Yeah, so yeah. This is, see, in the old times, the Mexican boxing gyms, you had to be a coach in both the Lucha Libre and the boxing, you had to be certified. But, um, shoot, I'm sure I may have missed a few spots, but this is something where every time you come here, you just you can get it's, on it's, foot it's, and find it. It's a, I mean, I'm from here, I grew up in Tijuana, and I just found a new place yeah, right next door. Yeah, it's psychic. It's, a, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting, it's interesting place. A lot You'll of see people in there. When you see there's movement, there's something good, and um, you get the, the homemade, I mean, usually when I was just going to visit in San Diego, I wouldn't even eat. I would just fast until I get back to TV. <laughs> but now, now I'm spending my time over and, and thank God for my friends. Um, now, now, from your perspective, like yeah. you have a, when I travel in the U.S., sure. you know, and then come back to TJ, I get offered Mexican food all over the United States. You know, like, hey, Ed, try these tacos here. Try these tacos over here in the U.S. What's that experience for you like now that you've had tacos here? Well, I like it. Well, in California, you do have some certain things that are good. Like, yeah, it's not even going to be close. It's a different That's thing. That's the thing, though. Like, Californians think that uh, they're pretty close. 
but I don't know. No, no, it's a different thing. It's, 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 it's the tortillas one is, are different. One is like like a hamburger type of deal, <laughs> and one is like it's just different. Like over there's a bigger one. It's gonna fill you up, and here's gonna be like smaller and and, and authentic. So like the California burrito. Yeah, I, I think only one place sells it here. The, the, the Pepceron ones, and, but like most of the burritos are small. Little ones. Packable, you can put it in Little pocket. like this. I get the burrito de, uh, de frijol. <laughs> frijol con queso. Frijol con queso. Yeah, that's all you it's need. A burrito some carbs. And the cholo. He's got the best one, el cholo. Fuck it, eh? And, um, um, shoot, and, and, and that's just the thing. Um, something about TJ is like, I'll see famous people here. Seriously, like out of nowhere, yeah. you'll just be like, whoa, you'll see all types of people, famous fighters, out of nowhere, you don't know who's going to walk around here, because yeah. um, the biggest, I think it's the most crossed border in the world. It's one of the biggest, it's one of the, it's the most, bu it's busiest border crossing on the planet right now. It's basically turning into San Diego too, it's, it's getting, getting gentrified, a lot of people are putting money into it. That's why all the sky rides are coming up. Yeah, everything and with respect. As long as yeah. people don't come here and try and, um, like I said, change it. If you train at a gym and you treat it with respect, you should also treat yeah. every place you go to with the same respect. And if someone messes with you, just keep a mental note who it is. That's what I like to do. I mean, I'm not looking to yell and scream Tijuana, at people. Tijuana has very real consequences for people if they, you know, if they don't. Uh, so not respectful. This is, this is usually what I what I like to tell people. But it's it's not it's a it's not a place to be afraid. Uh, a lot of people come here. It's great. But what you fear, you'll attract. What you love, you'll attract. And also, what you fear, you'll attract. So it's a pretty good way of uh, thinking about it. So it goes both ways. So hey, if it's not for you, hey, if you don't like leaving your own backyard, stay in San Diego. But if you like traveling, if you've been to Brazil. If you've, if you've been out of there, hey, come visit, be nice. Um, yeah. Show some respect and, and man, to start wrist locking people. Sometimes the they walk down the street. Where does that come from? Where's that? Where's the where's the wrist lock the fucking well, world down? In Grace Jiu Jitsu, the first one you learn for yeah. self defense when a guy pushes yeah. you, grab my elbow with both hands. Oh, and you got it. So that's, that's where it all begins. Like old school, and then you just keep going with it and going with it. And Maeda, he's the guy that brought. Jiu Jitsu from the Kodokan in Japan. He took off the gi and wanted to fight. They got mad at him, so he went traveling and challenging places. He would go to, uh, what do they call it? Markets, like um, farm, farmers markets and fairs. And he would do his little Jiu Jitsu demo, and of course, someone would be like, that don't work. Like my younger friends would be like, I'll kick work. his ass. And then he would challenge him, beat him up, and then everyone wanted to learn from him. And I heard he actually got his nickname here in Mexico. Okay. Count Combat, uh, Conjicoma, why? Because there's actual footage of him saving a woman's life here in Mexico. He traveled everywhere and they called him Count Combat in there. So um, yeah, he even came to Mexico. I think it was in Mexico City, but he traveled everywhere. And um, but yeah, he did the, he, he came more, he came more to Elio Gracie, but he was also a specialist of the wrist lock. The Kimura, the guy defends it, then you get this. And so when I moved to Brazil, the guy that I trained with, Oswaldo Alves, he just passed away as well too. He's the, he the highest ranked guy in Jiu Jitsu at, until like a few weeks ago. He was like one of Carlson's rivals. They didn't like each other. Oswaldo had the best school for a little team like this and Carlson had the best big team. Yeah. They never talked until like a few years ago, like because of me, I like, got, they would see each other, walk the other way, they become friends. And Oswaldo was specialist in that, because he was the judo coach of the Gracies. And he lived in Japan and trained with these, uh, the Kimura school. So I'm one of the few people that knows these. And when I got my back injured, I couldn't do arm bars and all these crazy moves because it's a lot of movement. Yep. The wrist lock is like the older man's arm bar. So I tell you when wrist lock the world, Jocko Willing, he could have armbarred the guy the other day. He goes, instead, I wrist lock the fucker. Yeah. And um, yeah, you'll like it because they're everywhere. You just got to dominate that elbow. So on the ground, the elbow already can't move. And, and when the guy defends the wrist, then you just go to the neck. He defends the neck, go back to the wrist. And I just go back and forth, back overload. and forth. And, yeah, overload. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, it doesn't work. I go for the leg. The leg lock is like a trick. Like the wrist lock that's would be a joker. That's interesting. So it's, uh... 
know, they have these principles and everything. High low principle, basically. Yeah, high low. Neck, wrist, neck, neck wrist, neck, neck, wrist, neck, neck wrist. head, wrist, head, wrist, head, wrist. Head, arm, the arms stronger. The shoulders strong. This is like, besides the fingers, this is the weakest joint. Yep. So why not, instead of breaking the grip, why not just wrist lock it? And so when I travel, especially to Europe, um, they're not allowed to choke people, the police. It's like against the rules, especially like in Greece. So they love wrist locks. In, in the US they, too. In the US too, there's a, there's legislation that's going around as far as without chokes. So use of force. If anyone wants to contact me, just check me on Instagram. If they delete my Instagram, which happened already um, a couple times. I'm Pete the Greek. Just Google me. Pete the Greek Jiu Jitsu. Doesn't matter Pete if he's the Greek. Jiu-jitsu. Jiu -jitsu. No, on, on Instagram it's Pete the Greek Wristlock, the world. The world. But I'm just saying, like 10, 20 years from now, if you need to find me, it says Pete the Greek Wristlock. You'll find me. You'll find. Yeah, yeah, you have. I'm never in the same spot. But if you're lucky, you'll find me. Most of my friends, you call them, they're not gonna answer. Kind of like, <laughs> hey, we just showed up here at this boxing gym. I haven't seen these guys in two months. No, it just appeared. I mean, he just appeared here. <laughs> this material life. Most of these guys, you know what I mean? They'd be cleaning those buckets if they came in here with cameras. So, <laughs> uh, thank God for the coach. Learn how to shadow box if you do jiu-jitsu. I'm tired of seeing jiu-jitsu guys throw punches all crazy. Like, you know, learn, learn your striking. If you want to learn how to strike, Mexico is the best. If you want to learn how to kick, you can learn that anywhere. But man, the Mexican hands, I love it. And you got to lock your wrist when you throw a punch. You keep your shoulder loose, keep your elbow loose. But from here to here, it's got to be strong, you know? It's got to be strong. So we're going to move around a bit, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're going to show, you're going to show with some wrist locks. Yeah. All right.